Hey everybody! In this video I'm going to explain the theory of island biogeography and think about how the species area relationship is explained by this theory. So the first thing we want to look at is the species area relationship, which is uh, one of the only real laws in ecology. We just observe this relationship over and over again. And here is the relationship. Just a positive slope of the log area on the x-axis and the log of species number on the y-axis. And that slope is a fitted line amongst data that tend to look like this. So imagine each of the points that I just drew is an island, and the island might be a large area island. You can draw a dashed line down to the x-axis, and um, the prediction would therefore be that because it's an island of large area, it's going to have a higher number of species on it. And as I said, this is a pattern that we tend to see over and over again in nature. The general rule of thumb, thumb is that a tenfold increase in island area is going to generate a twofold increase in species number. Here's some examples of what that looks like in nature. These are all published in a 1962 ecology paper by Preston. The top panel up here, which we'll label A, shows um, bird species in the East Indies. Again, it's log area on the x-axis and log species number on the y-axis. And you can see that each of these dots represents a different East Indian island. Um, there's Borneo. And Borneo is a larger island, and again, it has a higher species number. And the fit is very good for the data in the top panel. The bottom panel shows plants in the Galapagos Island group. It's all a whole bunch of different plant species. And again, we tend to see um, I'll use a lower example this time. For smaller islands, such as Culpeper down here, there's the dot right there for Culpeper, um, we see a small island area and concomitant with that fewer species on that island than we see for larger islands like Albemarle uh, here on the other end of the distribution. We see this pattern again over and over again. If you take any species group and any cluster of islands and plot them, you see this positive slope. So if you take all those data and put them together, you can generate a kind of bigger picture, which is that not only is area important in determining how many species are going to be on an island, but also how close that island to the mainland is can have an impact. So here's an example where we have far islands that are shown in the bottom part of this image. They're in red. Near islands are clustered up here at the top. And islands that are near to the mainland tend to have more bird species on them than islands that are far from the mainland. The overall pattern, of course, is still that general correlation, which I'll draw in red here, of the species area relationship. So the question arose, what is it that's driving these species area patterns that we observe over and over again in nature on islands? In the 1960s, MacArthur and Wilson put together the ideas of species area relationships and island size information and derived a theory of island biogeography, um, which we're going to talk about for the remainder of this talk. So the main assumptions for MacArthur and Wilson's theory go something like this. First, there's a mainland source pool for all the species that could possibly migrate to an island or end up on an island. And all the species in that source pool have similar abilities or probabilities of immigration, similar rates of extinction from an island, immigration to an island. So that's number one. Number two is that the probability of colonization on an island is proportional to the proximity of that island to the mainland. So I've got a mainland over here on the left-hand side of the screen, and three different islands depicted. Island 1 is close to shore, as is Island 2, so those are both proximal to the mainland, whereas Island 3 is quite distant from the mainland. And so the probability of colonization is higher to Island 2 than it would be to Island 3, just because of that distance. A third assumption is that colonization, which is migration to an island, and extinction, which is loss of a species from an island, are independent of the species composition on that island. So it doesn't matter which species are already there, um, the new species that are showing up just do that independent of what's already on the island. Um, and the final assumption is that smaller populations in any um, community are likely to more likely to go extinct than larger populations. So once something becomes small, then the extinction probability increases in that case. So you could imagine that a smaller island might maintain a smaller population, and so there's going to be a corollary to the Macar to the model we're about to look at that thinks about those smaller populations and extinction rate. 
Okay, so we need to define both immigration rate and extinction rate. First of all, immigration rate is the number of new species that are colonizing an island per unit time. And this rate is going to be maximized when there are no species on the island. So we've got an island that's basically native habitat, there's nothing out there, and so we're going to have a high rate of new species showing up on the island just by chance. However, when all the potential colonizers from that mainland pool have showed up on the island, so S equals P, the mainland pool, then we're going to have an immigration rate of zero because any new migrant individual that shows up on the island isn't a new species showing up on the island. And notice that the x-axis down here is not number of individuals on the island, but rather the number of species that are present on that island. Okay, so we've got our two endpoints for this curve. Um, this could be drawn as a straight line, and that is the simplest way to derive the MacArthur-Wilson theory of equilibrium theory of island biogeography. However, most models actually derive this with a curvilinear relationship for reasons I won't go into in this talk. So we'll probably draw these as curves for the rest of the time here. So that represents immigration rate. Extinction rate, on the other hand, is the number of already present species on that island that are going extinct per unit time. And so when there are no species on the island, none of them can go extinct. That's going to be our first data point that we look at, so that's going to be down here. Whereas if all the possible species in the system are present on the island, that's going to maximize the probability that one of those species could go extinct. And again, I'll draw that a curvilinear relationship to show that rate that's happening. So you can take these two different rates and put them together, immigration rate shown in green and represented by this letter I, and the extinction rate in blue represented by the E. And if we combine those two together, what that generates for us is an intersection of the two rates. And where those two rates intersect defines a number of species that um, would be on that island when the system is at equilibrium. So it's at equilibrium because the rates are equal to each other when a new species shows up. Sorry, I should say a new species shows up at the same rate that, a new species, that an old species goes extinct. And so we get this S hat value for the number of species that are present. So the MacArthur-Wilson theory of island biogeography generates three kind of main outcomes. The first of those is that the number of species on an island should eventually become roughly constant or go to equilibrium, and that's that value S hat that we looked at on the previous slide. The next is that the number of species on an island is determined by a dynamic balance between immigration and extinction. And I've emphasized the word dynamic here to point out that it's not that the system goes to equilibrium and becomes static and that species A, B, C, and D are the four species on the island and that's it, but rather that species D might be lost but species E could show up and there's still four species on the island, you're still at equilibrium, but it's with a different four species. So it's a dynamic balance. And finally, islands have a continual turnover of species, which is caused by that dynamism in the previous point, with some species becoming locally extinct and others immigrating. So again, dynamic, not static. So I keep emphasizing this idea of species going extinct. I do not mean when I'm saying extinct that the species goes extinct from the planet. So I could, this is another way to say that it's going extinct is to say that it's lost from the island. So when we're saying becoming extinct in this model, we're just saying the species disappears from that particular island, but it's still in the big species pool from the mainland. It, it could recolonize. Okay, so taking all these ideas and starting to put them together, we can now think about what's going on with island size and island distance from the mainland. So in the graph below, I've still got the original immigration rate shown in green, but I've broken the extinction rate into two different groups. I've got this, um, the original extinction rate, which I've now labeled the extinction rate for small islands, to point out that larger islands, because they are large, are going to have ameliorated extinction rates. That is, they're not going to have as severe of a problem with extinction. And so that's going to reduce, on a large island, the rate of extinction. And so we can draw a large island rate that's a lower curve than the small island rate up here. And so the neat thing about this is that if we compare large to small islands, we can go from the bottom axis across 
over to the y-axis. So the species richness on a large island is shown there, the SL, and that generates a turnover or a dynamism on the large islands of some rate that's given on the y-axis. On the other hand, we can have species richness here for our small island, and notice that that species richness for a small island is lower than it is for the large island. So fewer species are going to be sustained on a smaller island by this prediction. And we also see that we kind of expect to see a higher turnover of species on that smaller island because the rates at which they're intersecting are higher than they are for the other situation. Likewise, we can think about how the distance from the mainland is affecting rates. And the rate that gets affected in that case is the immigration rate. And so our extinction rate remains fixed now it's the blue rate, and the original immigration rate is now, we're going to think about that being an island that's close to the mainland, whereas an island that's further from the mainland is going to have a reduced immigration rate. So there's the far curve, and it's much lower than the initial rate of immigration. And again, you can think about what the species richness is, the number of species that are going to be predicted at each of these. So the number of species predicted on a near island is greater than the number of species, species predicted on a far island. And likewise, our turnover on a near island is higher than our turnover on a far island. OK, so the predictions of island biogeography theory, then, are that immigration and extinction rates may vary with island size and with isolation. And specifically, that large islands should be supporting more species than small islands. Also, that near islands should support more species than far islands. So there's two nice extinction, uh, extensions that we can make to this model. The model itself that we've looked at so far, we can break it down into thinking about how immigration and extinction, or the rates over here, are affected. And then we can also think about how area and distance, the two things that we were looking at for the measuring for the islands, um, influence the model. And the MacArthur-Wilson model that we've looked at so far um, impacts these two quadrants of this particular grid. So immigration is affecting distance up here in the upper corner, and area is affecting extinction down here in the lower quadrant. But that leaves us two other quadrants to think about. So in one extension of the model, we can think about what would happen if Im the immigration rate were affected by area. And when we see that happen, we, we say that it's a target effect, which I'll describe on, in a couple of slides. The other thing that could happen is that distance from the mainland is actually affecting extinction rates, and that's called the rescue effect. We're going to go over each of these in turn. Okay, so first let's think about that second one, the rescue effect. Um, up here in the upper corner, I'm showing the original um, prediction of the model, where there's one extinction curve for two, two different um, immigration curves, one for near islands and one for far islands. But now we're saying not only does distance, near and far, impact immigration, but it also impacts extinction. And the reason for this is that when islands are near to another source, like near to the mainland, then the constant arrival of species can rescue or, or replace, is a better word for rescue perhaps, that species, any species, when it goes locally extinct. And th by this I mean the same species that went extinct. So a near island is going to have a lower extinction rate for a species because when the species is kind of on the edge, the populations or sizes are really small, a new individual may show up that can rescue that population and allow it to reproduce for another generation. And so that's going to lower the extinction rates. So here you go. You can see now we've added a new extinction curve for near islands, we'll call the old one the far curve, and the new curve for near islands. And the effect of adding that curve is that we've gone from a turnover that was out here to a new turnover rate that's lower. And also more species are being maintained on that near island than on the far island. So we have the lower extinction rate that's shown there, and that's generating with a lower rate, a lower turnover here. Likewise, we can think about that target effect and now have area affect 
immigration as well as affecting extinction. So before in our graphs, we had a pattern that looked like this little inset at the top where the extinction rates were different for small and large islands, but the immigration rate was the same. Now we can say that the immigration rate on small islands is expected to be lower because that island is smaller, so a species are randomly migrating out away from the mainland, they're less likely to hit a small island than they are to hit a large target. That's why it's called the target effect. So these small islands present a smaller target for colonizing species, and therefore they're going to have lower immigration rates, so that's shown by the lower green curve here, and that's going to lead to lower turnover. So the original immigration rate for the small island before we reduced the, oh, sorry, the original turnover before we reduce the immigration rate would have been up here. And now that we have this lower immigration rate, we also have a lower turnover. That's represented by that lower arrow. Okay. So after learning about island biogeography from this talk, you should be able to state the species area relationship and explain how it relates to the theory of island biogeography. To predict equilibrium species number by drawing and interpreting plots of species number against extinction and immigration curves, and in the showing the differences in island size and island distance from the mainland. And finally, you should be able to explain species turnover as a dynamic process, relating turnover to both the rescue effect and to the target effect.